Exactly 48 hours, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria met and um, came out with a few resolutions. Now, the key resolution that is um, hitting the policy right about now is an increase in the monetary policy rate, uh, which, in other words, um, is the interest rates. Uh, it was moved from 18.75% to 22.75%. Now, these had uh, raised quite a lot of concerns among them. Um, private sector players, the organized private sector players, the real sector players of the economy. Today on the show, we'll be looking at um, how the organized private sector will be reacting to this development. Talking about um, NPR being increased to 22.75%. Adewale Smart Oyerinde, the Director General of the Nigeria Consultative Association Forum, is joining us right about now to bring clarity uh, to the concerns that this might bring about to the real players within the sector. So good to have you on the show, Wale. DJ, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning for having us once again. Yes, fantastic. So um, I've listened to a few arguments after the NPC uh, came about this decision. and. Um, Part of the arguments, uh, I want to believe, um, does affect um, the operations of, of the real sector. Did you see this um, extreme, yes, I, I call it extreme tightening. Did you see this extreme tightening of, um, po of policies uh, coming? Did you see this? Well, um, once again, good morning, and uh, good morning, good morning. viewers also. I, I think uh, probably nobody saw it coming. Though we all know that something has to be done and done quickly to curtail the downward spiral of 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 the of the of the system, we know something has to be done. We know the CBN has to take very proactive and definitive steps to address um, the issues around money supply, around inflation, and because the 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 the, the the team also haven't met for a while. So um, coming up with this, I, I think we're aligned with what one of the commentators uh, have said, um, as a this Macrewani, that this is our term audacity of, of monetary policy. Um, why we don't expect it, but it's, it's here already. Um, the CBN has its, has its objectives. Um, they've been under fire for a while to do something definitive to rescue the monetary policy from from, from the negatives, from the persistent concern that has been expressed by stakeholders. And and um, in their wisdom, the, the 12 men in their wisdom, you know, they feel this is the best that could, um, that could happen. Um, so it's for us to walk through it and and hope for the best, as it were. Walking, walking through it, through it um, um, DG, um, is the concern that this brings to uh, the credit credit governance, credit credit economy of of of, of Nigeria, uh, which obviously affects uh, players within the real sector, the organised private sector. Um, access to funding has been a major concern. Uh, when it was 18.75 percent, there were still major concerns. Now it is 22.75 percent. Uh, how do you think this will impact uh, credit activities for our players within the real sector? Well, it, it, creates, it, it brings about a new dynamics, you know, a new dynamics of tightening, and um, it also continues in short run. You know, my look at it as creating a more stifling environment for organized businesses within the context of access to fund, and those are already exposed to credit. You know, now the interest rate has increased, and most likely you have to pay more for what you have borrowed. Um, leveraging or just opposing that with the inhospitable environment that businesses are currently uh, working uh, working in they realize uh, the tightening becomes very tight now you know so it's it's um it's in the short term in short run uh, it's going to be more tightening of the bed for everybody and as it affects organized businesses you you agree with me uh, it will spill over to the economy spill over to the to the households it will spill over to to the individual, it is spill over to all of us. So it's it's a tightening season, as um, as many have called it. 
While we appreciate the CBN's intention of controlling inflation and strengthening the Naira, uh, we, we also believe that more consideration should have been given to organize businesses and the real sector within the context of their current challenges. But, well, CBN's objectives of, um, of controlling inflation and strengthening the Naira, which are very important also, you know, we, we think um, we think uh, we think we'll see how, how the, the days ahead, how, how the pans out. I've been covering the, the, the money market um, in the last decade, and um, I've often seen um, tightening and increasing NPR as a model that the Central Bank of Nigeria over the years uh, thought that will be a way of clamping down on inflation. But every time we see we see um, further tightening. The inflation continues to hit on the rooftop. Uh, couldn't there have been other measures that the central bank could have adopted in trying to uh, fight this inflation? We look at our inflation. Our inflation is a push, a cost push of inflation we are facing, uh, factored by several other uh, uh, parameters away from monetary monetary parameters. Uh, wouldn't children that have been able to look at our food inflation, which is over 30 percent uh, as we speak? Huge, com com huge com contributor to the right to the to the high to the hike in inflation inflation figures. I have never seen further tightening of monetary policy rates bringing down inflation in Nigeria. I can't remember. You know, you know, you know, the, the perception is if you tighten the monetary policy, it has a way of reducing your propensity to, to 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 spend and probably increase your propensity to save which will also reduce the cost push cost push inflation that they were talking about some of them have also said if you tighten the monetary policy we can attract foreign direct investment and we can also strengthen the naira and thus strengthen the economic growth you know it depends on where you are looking at it from or which which side of the divide that you are in for the CBN, the long-term objective, and we have issues. All of us have issues with the Nera, the current value of the Nera, which has uh, which has which has gone uh, gone a wire, if you permit me. And the current rates and the current issues concerning forex is also a big concern for organ organized businesses. So, in the short term, you know, if this tightening will help us to stabilize the Nera, will help us to bring in more direct investment, which uh, basically serious concern for the CBN. Um, I think the, the, the issue is to balancing it, balancing it with the current needs of, of the enterprises within the local context. Because enterprises still need funds, enterprises still need, still need access to finance, and a galloping, a galloping interest rates, progressively increasing interest rates, will naturally feed into the cost of, cost of dream business which will also go back to the consumer because the cost of living that we are clamoring about, the cost of living will also progressively continue to go up in the short run. You see cost of airfare is, is going up, cost of rent will go up, cost of food will all go up in the, in the short run. I mean that uh, against your prediction that the tightening will start to make a post, give a positive effect in the, in, in, in the medium term. Those are, are, are the expectations, and, and this this conversation and this whole uh, tightening, I think, is based on serious hope that things will turn around within the short time. We're living on hope for as much as we can remember. Uh, some some have argued that um, um, even the central bank or by the federal government, the central bank by station, the federal government, are uh, equally responsible for what uh, for these. Um, a spike in um, inflation rates, and the, the argument revolves around um, uh, excess liquidity in the system. Liqu I mean, excess money uh, within the system, all given to uh, the ways and means, uh, uh, you know, funds that did hit the system a couple of months ago. Uh, and so they are hoping that maybe the central bank should also begin to look at uh, mopping up, mopping up excess liquidity in the system, rather than this um, uh, consistent tightening of monetary policy rates? Well, it, it, it's, it's one of the options open, open to them. You know, we have come to understand that when you have many options, many economic options, either to control inflation, uh, to control money supply, to control or manage costs, um, 
many options to attract foreign direct investment. You know, if you bring out, you put 24 experts, you know, on the table to come up with options, it's most likely you have different options from those different experts. And the, 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 the reality for us is, um, or where we find ourselves now, is to, to trust the CBN, to trust the 12 wise men, that they, uh, they've done a thorough analysis of the situation and they are they're in a position to, to, uh, to navigate us away from the crisis of the past. You know, we can't run away from the crisis of the past. You know, the ways I mean was in trillions, you know, reckless and reckless endeavors that we all conspire, you know, to 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 embark on as as a nation because we, we cannot educate ourselves, we cannot educate the media. You know, when this issue of waste means was going on in the last administration, we all probably um, uh, pretended as if it doesn't it doesn't matter. And now we have found ourselves where, where we are. So the, the, the charge is to trust the CBN, to trust its, 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 its short and medium and long term objectives, and appeal that, look, in the pursuit of the tightening of the monetary policy, in the pursuit of the rescue of the NERA, in the pursuit of the economic growth and stability in the monetary, monetary policy environment, that due consideration should also be given to local local businesses that are actually contributing maximally to the growth of this economy at least at this present time it's indeed a sad place to be awale uh for the nation's economy uh, but then let's begin to make some 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 fresh recommendations i, I was at a meeting uh with um, man over over the week where man is actually asking for uh priority in terms of um allocation of FX to the sector, if indeed uh, uh, we must tackle this concern around inflation and high cost of, of doing business, uh, considering the importance of um, manufacturers to the growth of, of the economy, man is asking for uh, special interventions uh, for manufacturers in Nigeria. Should, should, should maybe this could be another way uh, to go. If we must reactivate, if we must uh, you know, get this economy uh, back to where we want it to get to. Yeah, we, we, we fundamentally, we, we, we are aligned with the position of man, but um, we also go for that, that beyond, beyond manufacturing, you know, there are, there are over, over, over 50 different sectors, you know, 50 different sectors in this, in this economy. And um, manufacturing is, is one of those one of those sectors, a very critical sector indeed. And we have advocated over time that government should actually give priority to the productive sector. You know, is 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 when we are productive. You know, majority of the issues we face, the underlying factor is the paucity of our productive capacity, or our direct or indirect conspiracy. All of us to stifle the productive sector. So we spend more on importation rather than focus on the real sector that can actually position us back on the tra trajectory of growth. If we are producing locally, if we empower the real sector, empower the real sector, not not the portfolio portfolio manufacturers, we empower the real sector. We'll have addressed the issue of of, of, um, of, of struggling GDP growth. We'll have addressed the issue of unemployment. We'll have addressed the issue of insecurity. We'll have, to a large extent, also addressed the issue of the pressure on forex. Because as we are producing locally, our propensity to import will also reduce considerably. So it's, 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 it's a call in the right direction. The government should give priority. We should put our money, as they say, in the local balance. We should put our money where our mouth, our mouth is. And the sector the group that can actually help us to navigate this difficult time is the organized private sector and government should take take a, a costly look at, at that at that sector again a key a key recommendation uh if we must move the economy in the right in the right uh direction uh wally um we have seen quite a few interventions in terms of um guidelines by the central bank uh, primarily to address concerns around the fx the fx market I, I need i need to get your your sincere your honest um, 
perspective to this um, conversation. Do you see those guidelines? Have those guidelines, have those moves by the central bank in recent times, have these, has it been able to move the FX concerns from where it was to, uh, you know, in the right direction as a player within the organized private sector? It hasn't, but those efforts are well acknowledged, I must, I must confess. Those efforts are well uh, seriously acknowledged. Um, we, we heard that there are few columnists that are also trying to frustrate the effort of the central bank. But if you check the, the, the movement of the exchange rate, you know, you, you, want to, you want to believe that the CBN knows exactly what it's doing. You want to believe there is a definitive plan to address those issues concerning um, concerning the arbitrage that is still probably going on, you realize that is, is, you, you want to think there is some 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 clarity on what the CBN wants to do. And those policies from the um, the first one that addresses the bank, the, the, the issue we had two days ago, that the two chief executives of um, of Binance were they were they were they were, they were, they were, they were detained because of. The, the issues concerning the, the crypto market. So you want to believe there is some definitive steps or clarity you know, about what the CBA want, want to do. So we are just hoping that those steps will be stepped up, will give them enough time you know, to, 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 uh, to, to understand the issues. Because you know, when you keep changing policies consistently, it will also be that you have not, you have not taken time to understand the real issues. So you are basically responding rather than being proactive to address those issues. So we we'll keep watching, we we'll keep watching the market, but the, the trajectory of the market, the little gain here and there that has been made by the NERA in the last few days, you know, shows that something has been done and something has been done rightly. It's just for the bank to deepen those things that are put positive within the context of rescuing the NERA and making Forex available so that those gains can be consistent and they can be they can be they can be they can be massive even in the short and, and, and long run the last um, um, governor of the central bank uh, took some drastic steps uh, which we all monitored from here uh, one of which is climbing down on, on crypto operators uh, and platforms like binance uh, bookie fx um, and many other speculators within uh, the FX space. Uh, however, uh, that did not change the tide, the tide for uh, or foreign exchange in Nigeria. Uh, you know, I need, I need concrete direction. You, you talked about the fact that uh, we, we see more of a reactionary uh, I mean, actions from, from the central bank as against um, proactive uh, you know, moved by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And, and I, I don't think it's taking us where we want, where we want to get to uh, in, any, in, the, in the shortest possible time. But then, do, do you really think that uh, the concern with the FX market is primarily about the liquidity, or there is more to it? Um, I, I, I think that the currently, you know, we have we issue with supply, seriously. We have issues with supply. We, our sources of supply are not are not so guaranteed. And the, when you want to operate a, a free market, you want to operate a free, absolutely free market as as um, as as we desire, or if float, floating the exchange rate as it were. One key factor you must address is the issue of your supply. You know, it's simple economics. If demand outweighs supply, then the cost will go up. If supply outweighs demand, the cost will go down. Now, you cannot really control demand. We can try, we can regulate, or we can create channels where we monitor demand. You know, as the CBI has done with the BDCs, where they must register, they must only trans transact cash, forex in cash, up to a certain maximum, all other transaction in forex must be must go through the must go through the wire, must go through the banking system. You can only regulate the you can regulate the demand. You can't really control it. The area you can control 
is the supply. So what we have to do is to take care of the supply side. Are we still having the oil, is oil theft still going on? We have to address the issue of oil theft. Are we still importing, uh, are we still importing petroleum products? We have to address the issue of importation of petroleum products. And we have to still come back to the conversation we had earlier. We have to make our local industries very productive. We have to ginger the productive sector so that production manufacturing can continue and be upscaled within the context of this environment. We have to deal with the issue of insecurity because if you go to the north, you know, the massive the industrialization that has gone on in the north through the issue of insecurity. We have to address that. If we don't address that, if you don't address the supply issues, then this issue might, might just might just linger for, for, for a long while. So, um, um, uh, DG, uh, for the roads, uh, so what would you be telling players within your sector when they come to you and say this is fighting too hard, our day business is um, getting extremely unbearable uh, for us and all of that, and then um, now we can't even access funds at a cheaper rate, the ones that we accessed initially, the interest have been moved up. What would you be telling uh, players, your players in your sector? You know, it's it's quite it's quite um, it's quite a tough a tough call, and we just really have to we have to commend the resilience of an average Nigerian business. You know, why we are still dealing with this issue of forex, why we are still dealing with the issue of the operating environment. Uh, we asked a few days ago that the Ministry of Interior came up with the EEN um, levy, the uh, the expatriate expatriate employment levy. That also tends to to uh, to create to create another bottleneck, as we want to call it, for um, for operators um, in, the, in this in this economy. And those are the things that are quite quite worrisome. You know, notwithstanding that we have structures, current structures. You know, we have the SAPA card. We have uh, in the oil and gas. We have the, the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board. They have done creatively well. The largest thing in managing the issue of expatriate quota and addressing the issue of skills transfer. You know, the, the ministry came up, Minister of Interior came up with his own, his own EEL you know, that we think it's more it's more driven by the desire for revenue than the desire to address the issue of skill transfer. You know, we can't be talking of skill transfer when we have to a large extent destroy our own educational system. The, 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 the university system is in the comatose, and even those that are talents in this country, those that are talents in this country, those that are called talents, real talents in this country, most of them have found them, their, their way to, to Europe, find their way to America, find their way to Canada in search of, in search of greener pastures. So if we don't address the fundamentals, you know, we keep creating bottlenecks for organized businesses. We can't be in one breath going abroad President travel uh, significantly in the last one year, you know, marketing the country for the foreign direct investors to come. And at the same time, we are creating bottlenecks for them. You know, can't bring $1 billion to this country, and then you are creating serious bottleneck for me. I have to pay $50,000 annually. For, for a director, I have to pay $10,000 annually. Those, are, those, those, those policies are quite contradictory. And, and if those countries of those expatriates decide to reciprocate in, in like manner, then we just put ourselves in, 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 in serious jeopardy. So those are the issues that we currently face. You know, few few weeks ago or so, another agency of government came up and and decided to ban sales of 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 of, of, um, of a certain of a particular product because they want to become the, the savior of the Nigerian child. I would say look. You have to balance health issues with economic issues. In that industry, there's over 500,000 employees in the value chain. There's an investment close to $1 billion in that, in that, in that sector. You can just close it down one day because, because you guys want to be seen to be, to be, uh, to be carrying out your, your function. You know, and those are the bottlenecks that organized businesses currently face. So for us, is is continue to engage government, continue to advocate for government. For His Excellency, uh, the, 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 the President, to see these issues and 
help organize businesses to ameliorate them as quickly as possible. The agencies, the ministries, the departments of government must be seen to be contributing and promoting enterprise sustainability. So that's the only way we can actually at, at, attract foreign direct investment in this environment. So I must say it, it's been challenging, it's been, it's been difficult. You, you add the news about PZ a few days ago, there was a news about the Netflix a few days ago. We have many other organizations that have either exited this country or they changed their business model. And all these things, they come back to haunt the economy. So an agency, a ministry, a department cannot be seen or cannot be, cannot be showcasing a policy or a project while that same policy or project is creating problems for the real sector is creating problems for other departments or ministries of, of the same government. We think something should be done and should be done quickly to address these issues. Very, very true, Abdiji. Thank you so very much. We, we, we believe and we also we so strongly believe that government should be more reactive, uh, more, more proactive than uh, uh, reactive, and the policies should be revisited. Uh, stakeholders' engagement should be encouraged uh, before these policies are, are formulated. And also, uh, government agencies should not be all about revenue generation. They should also look at the flip side of those policies. I, I completely agree with you uh, to a large extent. Uh, DG Adewale Smart, a year in day, thank you for your time with us on the show. And do have a great, a great day.